Hello and welcome to another Brawl video. Today we're taking a look at a mono white angel control deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, trying to meld Gisela with Bruna into Brisella, Voice of Nightmares, a 9 10 legendary Eldrazi angel with flying, first strike, vigilance, and lifelink, saying your opponents cannot cast spells with mana value 3 or less. So, an incredibly powerful card if we can get both Gisela and Bruna on the battlefield. Gisela is just one of the many angels in our 99, a 4 mana 4 3 with flying, first strike, and lifelink, so pretty decent stats. And then this says at the beginning of our end step, if we both own and control Gisela and Bruna, we get to melt them into Brisella. And then Bruna is our actual commander, a 7 mana 5 7, says whenever we cast it, we may return an angel or human creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So even if the opponent were to counter Bruna, we still get that cast trigger returning an angel or human from our graveyard to the battlefield, a 5 7 with flying and vigilance, so a pretty decent card in and of itself. And the good thing here is that if our opponent were to remove Gisela, we can still cast Bruna, getting back Gisela from the graveyard, and then end of turn we'll get to meld them into Brisella. So that's our game plan. Now, of course, we only have the one Gisela in the deck, so to help find it, we do have a few tutor effects to put Gisela into our hand. We've got Search for Glory, which can gain a bit of life off our Snow Plains as well. Then War of the Last Alliance can find two legendaries on the first two chapters, eventually giving our creatures double strike. And then Thalia's Lancer is also very synergistic with Bruna, as it's also a human we can return from the graveyard. A 4-4 first strike that when it enters can search for any legendary card, reveal it and put it into our hand. So those are the ways we have of directly finding Gisela. And then of course we've got a few additional card draw effects as well. I've split up the deck into a few different categories to help with the deck breakdown. Besides Gisela and our tutor effects, so we've got plenty of removal. This includes sweepers, spot removal, and even a few counter spells in white. Then we've got a lot of cards to help us ramp, since we are trying to cast some 7 mana angels in this deck, even 8 mana angels, so we can use the additional mana acceleration. And then we've got the actual angels in the deck, since we are playing lots of angel synergies as well. Bruna can get them back from the graveyard, so we've got quite a few decent angels to choose from. And then finally the miscellaneous section includes a few more cards that synergize with angels, and other ways to maybe draw cards or ways to tax the opponent to slow down their game plan. So that's our deck in a nutshell. Now for the deep dive, taking a look at our removal. We've got a lay down arms at one mana, another payoff for having lots of planes in your mana base. Then a mana tithe is our white counter spell, although you do need to time it correctly, but when it lines up it's glorious. And then we've got Reprieve, technically gets around uncounterable effects since you're not countering anything, just returning target spell to its owner's hand and drawing a card. And then Swords to Plowshares is great at answering creatures, Get Loss can also hit enchantments and planeswalkers, Ossification has to enchant one of our basics, which is not a problem, and can also deal with creatures and planeswalkers. Then Loron can destroy artifacts and enchantments, and can also be found with our various tutor effects, finding legendary creatures. Skyclave Apparition, another versatile removal spell. And then we've got a couple sweepers with Day of Judgment and Wrath of God at 4 mana. And then the 5 mana Sunfall exiles all creatures, can be an advantage at times, but we do have to be careful that we don't exile our own Gisela, because if Bruna gets exiled it goes back to the command zone, Gisela getting exiled means we won't be able to meld Brisella for the rest of the game. And then there's Elspeth Conquer's Death as another decent removal option that can eventually return a creature from our graveyard as well. And Solitude can also be flashed in to remove a creature, and we can even evoke it by pitching a white spell to essentially play it for free. And then we've got our ramp artifacts with at 2 mana, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, the new Solar Transformer, and the Iron Crag. Treasure Map can eventually transform into Treasure Cove, making additional treasures, and can also draw additional cards. Then I'm playing the Aspirant to give our angels a 2 mana discount, can also help us double spell multiple angels in the same turn. Then Restoration of Iganjo can find a planes which we can put in play on the second chapter, so that's another way of ramping. And then both File of Galadriel and the Celestus can make a mana, in addition to maybe gaining additional life or drawing additional cards. And then Worn Power Stone makes two colorless mana, similar to Hedron Archive, which is a bit more expensive at four mana, but this one doesn't enter tapped, so can immediately tap it to cast more spells, and can also be sacrificed to draw two cards when needed. And finally, Gilded Lotus can make three white mana, so another great way of ramping towards Bruna and our other expensive angels. Speaking of which, at two mana, we've got Jada, Font of Hope, another way of potentially ramping out other angels with the activated ability, and then giving us additional plus one counters on those angels as well. 
We've got a Youthful Valkyrie, which also grows as we play more Angels. Inspiring Overseer draws a card and gains a life. We've got a Righteous Valkyrie, which can also gain more life and eventually pump up our team if we have, in this case, 32 or more life in Brawl since we start out at 25. The Investigator can also generate additional clue tokens to draw cards. Resplendent Angel, a payoff for gaining 5 or more life in one turn to make additional Angel tokens. We've got the Vindicator, which can be disguised to maybe get rid of multiple creatures if we flip it face up, but can also just be a 4-2 flying a lifelink with a bit of protection built in. We've got a Linvala to shut down opposing mana creatures and other activated abilities of creatures. Archangel to tax the opponent for attacking and blocking. We've got Angel of Sanctions, which is also a removal spell when it enters, and can embalm it out of the graveyard if we don't return it with Bruna instead. Then there's Lyra pumping up all angels, giving them plus one plus one and a lifelink as well. We've got Sanctuary Warden, which can also draw cards when it enters or attacks. Angel of the Ruins can deal with multiple artifacts and enchantments, and thanks to Plains Cycling we can easily get it in the graveyard where we can also reanimate it with Bruna. And then a Sephara will make our other flying creatures indestructible. We've got Avacyn at 8 mana, making all of our permanents indestructible. And then Seros Emissary, often naming creature, can make it so opposing creatures don't deal any damage to us, and we can attack past opposing creatures as well, although you could also name Instant or Sorcery to maybe protect your angels from opposing removal. And then finally, the miscellaneous section includes Curse of Silence, often naming the opponent's commander to tax it for two. We've got Esper Sentinel, good against opposing non-creature spells, and also Human we could technically return with Bruna. A land tax is great if you're on the draw, as a way to find additional lands each turn. Scroll of Avacyn can be sacrificed to draw a card, and we also gain five life if we control an angel. A birth will find a plains, make a wall, and gain more life. We've got a bishop gaining life when angels enter and making spirit tokens when angels die. Swiftfoot boots can be a way of protecting our more expensive angels, giving them haste as well. Winter moon is a way to punish non-basic lands, as players can now only untap one non-basic land each turn, and we have mostly planes in our mana base, so it's going to affect the opponent more than us. We've got the Book of Exalted Deeds to make angel tokens end of turn if we gained three or more life, and there's also some nice game-winning combos with the Book of Exalted Deeds and some of our creature lands like Mute Vault or Faceless Haven. You may remember this from Standard. If you can activate the Book of Exalted Deeds after animating one of those creature lands, which also have the angel type, you can now put an enlightened counter on them, and then for as long as we control that land, we cannot lose the game and your opponents cannot win the game, so unless your opponent has a way of destroying our land, they won't be able to defeat us. Then even with the historic nerf, the One Ring is a very powerful card draw engine, especially in a deck that can gain a lot of life, and the Immortal Sun, since we don't have any Planeswalkers ourselves, can shut them all down, draw extra cards, give us a discount, and give our creatures plus one plus one. And then the mana base, as we mentioned, has both Faceless Haven and Muta Vault, which we can turn into creatures with all creature types, including Angel, to combo with our Book of Exalted Deeds. It can also be a good way of pressuring opposing Planeswalkers or just getting the last points of damage across. And that's why we need 35 Snow-Covered Planes to activate Faceless Haven, as well as gain additional life with our Search for Glory. And then a Monumental Henge seems worth it as a way to maybe find additional historic cards, which includes our Gisela. Then Cavern of Souls, naming Angel to make those uncounterable, great against the blue control decks. And then a Nykthos can also generate a ton of extra mana if we have a lot of white devotion. So these are some of the non-basics I'm still running despite playing Winter Moon in the deck, just because they are so powerful and we're unlikely to draw too many at once. And then Emiria's Call is more of a spell for 7 mana, making a pair of 4-4 Angel tokens, but can also be played as a land. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kellen, blue-green, and our hand seems okay. A laid on arms can be an answer for early mana creatures, or for Kellen himself. So it hopefully doesn't destroy our Mind Stone. So if they play Kellen right away, I guess I'll be a little bit shy of answering it with a laid on arms, since I'll only have three planes in play. But we can play Aspirant in the meantime. And then our opponent's not drawing with Kellen at least. Definitely a combo with the indestructible artifact lands as well, which you can target. So uh, you can basically draw a card for free. 
Opponent passes with a bunch of mana untapped. So how about a lay down arms, see if they want to fight over this, and then play Angel of Sanctions. Alright, that worked. So no real reason to play the Angel now. Opponent replays Kellen's adventure. And next turn we can play the Lancers to grab Gisela. And then we can already cast a 5 mana Bruna thanks to the Aspirant potentially. A Resplendent Angel's not bad either. Opponent will sack their clue. Okay, so can freely resolve our Lancers. And get our Gisela. There's Kellen once again. No artifact lands in the mana base. But a curiosity to enchant it. Okay, so... Time to deploy some angels here. Can uh, maybe try Gisela, see if they want to fight over it, and then still play an Angel of Sanctions afterwards. Pretty happy if they counter it, because that means we just get it back with Bruna. That also works. Alright, Curiosity falls off, and we can attack. Opponent kept Kellen underneath the Angels, so they must have a way to bounce it here. Yep, a Reverse Rebuke. Not a disaster. So no angel for me to get back, or human. Instead, redeploy Aspirants. And then can play both Gisela and Resplendent Angel. So that was a pretty good turn. Conqueror's Death, still an answer to Kellen potentially. But let's see if we can melt Brisella in the meantime. Alright, Mass Manipulation. That one's annoying, since it steals Gisela, so it's not even in my graveyard. And I also don't want to exile it with Sunfall or Conqueror's Death. Could use Angel of Sanctions, and then I need to find a way to get rid of my own Angel with maybe a Sunfall. So that might be the plan now. Or I can play Lancers and see what Angel we can find with it. Yeah, I guess we'll use the Angel of Sanctions here. And then no attacks. There's a Pondrial to double power and toughness. Happy to jump with Angel of Sanctions. Or we might want to take it so we get to Sunfall cleanly next turn. Because otherwise if I get Gisela back now, we would once again exile it with our own Sunfall. Could also jump and then just use Elspeth Conqueror's death on Zopandriel, but uh, Sunfall seems like a cleaner solution to this board, assuming it resolves. And Reprieve as a counter spell could actually come in handy for opponents got their own counter. So does this resolve? It does. We get Gisela back. And then next turn we can maybe play Bruna. Still nothing to return with it. And the Tarask. Okay. Seems like a good one to reprieve. So we know about the Tarask now. 10-10 can fight something and potentially kill us. 
So keeping the incubator as a blocker seems important. Melding Brisella, it's only a 9-10, so they can actually fight it with a Tarask successfully. So it's kind of the perfect answer. So what's my plan? Play Lancers, could get a one ring. Which might uh, buy me some time. So there's the Tarask. Can fight the Lancers. Nope, fights Gisela. So at least I'll gain four here. And now I can double block the Tarask to trade for it. And then Bruna's ecstatic to return Gisela, assuming there's no wash away. Yeah, that seems worth a shot here. I guess it's a cast trigger, so even if they had wash away, we'd still at least return Gisela. Alright, we finally got there. We melded Brisella. Let's see if it's good enough. Or if they have another mind control effect to steal it. Just playing Kellen again. Alrighty, so this turn could uh, play Lyra, play One Ring, won't have the mana to activate it. Uh, or Book of Exalted Deeds with Lyra looks good too. So let's try that. Attack for 10. And then the book will make a token out of turn. Now I guess Kellen could destroy my uh, artifact if it attacks. But we do have a few blockers lined up. Verdant Rejuvenation can be quite powerful, cheating all sorts of creatures onto the battlefield. And our opponent found a Canvas Transformation, which normally they wouldn't have been able to cast, but with Rejuvenation they were able to put on the battlefield. So now we've got a 3-3 Brisella. And Conqueror's Death also cannot get rid of the Transformation, since it's a 2-mana enchantment. Thorn Mammoth triggers a bunch, can fight our creatures, and Vorinclex can transform, so wow. That was a blowout. Kellen blowing up the book as well, now that we don't have enough blockers for it. So that was a disaster. Yeah, how do I get rid of the transformation? Loran could maybe do it. At least I can conquer one of their creatures. At this point, maybe Vorinclex. Alright, let's go after Vorinclex. At least the One Ring is indestructible, so they won't be able to take it out with Kellen. Could attack with Brisella, just to send it back to the command zone. For now it's discouraging an attack as well. So yeah, the game keeps on going. So your opponent clearly not too interested in Playing counter spells, more just trying to play big expensive spells. And they did find a bridge in the meantime, as we mentioned earlier, so that way they can draw an extra card for free each turn. Archangel of Tithes. Still draw with the ring first. Skycalave Apparition answers Kellen. Or answers the transformation, which is probably the better targets. Cyclonic Rift with Overload and Response. Alright, back to hand we go. And then now I can cast Bruna getting back Lyra Dawnbringer. 
Could still be risky with Thorn Mammoth on the battlefield, so maybe we prefer taking that out first. And with a Conqueror's Death. At least we got to replay it here. Bruna getting back Lancers is also a pretty good value. A natural growth to double power and toughness. So they've got a few of those effects. Cost 5 mana, so can't exile it with the Apparition. Alright, so we've got 12 mana. Let's maybe start with Bruna. And not hating on the Lancers over Lyra. Can get Loron as a way to destroy the unnatural growth. Avacyn's not really going to help against blue-green since they're not really trying to destroy our stuff for the most part. And then play Loron on the unnatural growth. And then next turn we can try and meld Brisella once again. Conqueror's Death can also return. Lyra, Dawnbringer next turn. And a Witness Protection now trying to shut down Bruna, but we have Apparition to exile it. Kellan does get another attack in. So we've now faced Cyclonic Rift, a Rebuke, Manipulation. Not sure how many of those there are left that our opponent is playing. Nykthos isn't bad. So that'll give us a nice mana boost. Still gonna play Apparition first. Our opponent is still playing Counterspell. Fair enough. So they don't want us to meld again. Since yeah, this lost its name, so it no longer combines with Gisela. Can still play an Archangel. Give us more devotion. Tamp this for 10 mana, play the One Ring. Curse of Silence. What am I naming here? Like a uh, Final of Devastation or Crater Hoof Behemoth at this point. Can uh, just draw with Loron. And find a Vindicator. That I probably want to disguise first. Yeah, I'll go with Crater Hoof. Seems like something they would have in the deck. Or maybe Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, or some other Eldrazi. Amrakul. I mean, they have enough mana where they can probably cast those anyway. So I don't think this really matters. Could just rename Kellen. Maybe Amrakul, the Promised End. Seems like a fitting name, regardless. And then we can't attack into the Hall of the Storm Giants. Could still attack with my legitimate business person, since they probably don't want that to die. Alright, never mind. So we get back Bruna. So we can cast that next turn. Gonna wait on disguising this, I think. I see get restoration for a bunch more card draw. Yeah, I guess Amarakul gets enough of a discount where they would still be able to cast it pretty easily through the Curse of Silence. But it is a type of card I'm worried about. Mithril Coat protects Kellen, so it can keep attacking, although we would gain a lot of life here if they send it in, so they decide against it. Well, they need another sort of board wipe. Kogla can fight one creature. Make it Gisela. Uh, 
Uh, Vivian could have been played first so they could mine us and tutor something up when they cast Kogla, but it's just going to make a beast. What else? It does have reach, so they have two blockers for my flyers now. Kellen does need to pay the uh, Archangel tax. And draws another card, opponents halfway through the deck. Back up to 32. Alrighty, so on the board, we don't quite have lethal. So let's try casting Bruna first. And get back Gisela. Then we can make a bunch of mana here. Although let's see what we draw off uh, the One Ring first. A bunch of lanes. So now let's make all the mana, maybe after drawing with Loran. And then I think we use the Vindicator here. We can disguise it. And then they could still have some sort of bounce spell for my uh, Vindicator, so they would get their stuff back. But uh, x equals 4 seems reasonable. 1, 2, 3, 4. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what a game. This one took quite a while, but uh, yeah, technically we still melded Brisella somewhere in the middle of it. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Necrobloom, so a landfall deck. We've got a bit of ramp with Jada, Restoration. Yeah, I'll try this. Probably okay to play Emiria as a land. And we have other things going on at 7. And then, uh, yeah, plan is Jada, Restoration. So we should be getting closer to 7 mana. And then casting this to maybe deal with some artifacts or enchantments could also be useful. Otherwise we can always cycle it and wow, Gisela off the top so we can already cast that next turn if we'd like. Just gotta hope it doesn't get exiled. Yeah, that seems reasonable. Could also still go for Restoration. Yeah, I think I'm just fine playing Gisela. It's more mana efficient, applies pressure. And then if they take out Jada, Restoration could also get it back. Opponent just cultivating. Yeah, the Necrobloom deck is not known for having a ton of interaction. They're usually more interested in uh, a ramping and playing a landfall creatures. So... Had I played Restoration on 3, we would have been able to play Bruna next turn. But uh, we got a nice attack in in the meantime. And there's the Necrobloom. Can start making plant tokens initially and later zombies. And Tower can still make 2 mana here for a Cold Steel Heart. Alright, so... Don't have to discard a planes, could discard birth instead actually, and then put that back on the battlefield, which finds a planes. It doesn't ramp me, but still seems like good value. And then can attack for seven. And play bishop. And then next turn we can hopefully get uh, Brisella on the battlefield. Yeah, I suppose given that I had a bunch of planes in hand, I could have just discarded planes and then cast a birth since we didn't need the extra mana. In case Jada gets removed, I'll still have the seven mana for Bruna. So our opponent makes a plant. And a Cultivator Colossus, okay. Hopefully they don't get to put too many lands on the battlefield. But uh, possible they've built their deck around it. 
So yeah, opponent's gonna get to make a zombie for each one of those lands now. But yeah, for now they're definitely going off. So we might still lose, despite melding uh, Brisella next turn. We will have a bit of life gain from the bishop at least. And Necrobloom attacks, can block that one at least. Alright, well, if our opponent's got a Crater Hoof Behemoth next turn, that's maybe a reason to cast a Day of Judgment, but we're here for one reason and one reason only. And that is to melt Brisella. So let's go for it. Gain some more life. And gain life again, so we are at 48 with a 10 power life linker. So hopefully that's enough to keep us alive. Can certainly beat their board as is. But uh, Moonshaker Cavalry or Crater Hoof Behemoth might be enough here. Fellow our retreat, also pretty good. Can give them additional plus one counters. They can also use Field of Ruin on my Emiria to enable landfall again. And an Ancient Brass Dragon at least doesn't have haste. But it is a flying blocker, I suppose. Our opponent unable to cast spells with mana value 3 or less, so we don't need to worry about some cheap removal spell. But that is a lot of counters. Can block the Gitrog, so that's not gonna attack here, presumably. And then... This has Trample, 9 times 4, let's round up to 40. So, yeah, maybe you have to Chum Block here. But still close. Resplendent Angel can trigger, so that was a good draw. Yeah, again, the safest play would be to Day of Judgments. After attacking, I would be left with a couple spirit tokens as well. Although, might also want to just cast the Angel of Ruins to answer Felidar Retreat. And then can we survive another attack from all the zombies? Yeah, I don't think I necessarily survive next turn, even if I answer Felidar Retreat with my Angel of the Ruins. Is our opponent forced to trump? So if I Day of Judgments, I can still play Resplendent Angel, we'll get some flying tokens. In which case, Jada probably wanted to attack to put him to two, so the spirit tokens were more likely to cross the finish line. But uh, so be it, so we can tap this for mana. Back to the command zone. And then play Resplendent Angel, which will trigger end of turn, making another angel token. So we're in decent shape to win next turn, regardless. Could have gotten them for two more damage. And our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We only have two lands, but fear not. We also have land tax. So on the draw especially, this card's great. As it will make sure we don't miss a land drop for the rest of the game, pretty much. And then Curse of Silence, another way to slow down the opponent's commander. Their opponent decides not to break the land tax here. Well, I'm still gonna Curse of Silence you. And name Nahiri. Which Nahiri is this? Forged in Fury. So your opponent does not want us to have extra lands. Which means they're not gonna play anything out. So we're just gonna sit here for a while. That's one way to play around land tax. Although it usually leads to some silly games. Opponent already discarding a land, so it's not like they don't have any. 
All right, if they have a one drop to actually apply pressure with, it kind of forces us to make the first move in a way. But now nah, let's just chill. And then what do we want to get rid of? A uh, Faceless Haven, maybe. Can still land cycle the Angel to get an extra planes. Shadow Spear now, too. Well, at least our opponent's got a game plan here to beat our land tax. Attack with a companion for 24 turns. I'm still gonna wait, I think. And then discard at this point maybe a get lost. If I find a one mana removal spell, then we're fine. Opponent deciding what to discard to hand size, or maybe they decide to finally play something out. Nope, still discarding to hand size. Now, if I could immediately cast a Power Stone, I would maybe break my own land tax here. But let's be patient. We've got 23 more turns of being stubborn. And what to get rid of now? Maybe an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, maybe a Lyra. Can always reanimate it later with Bruna. All right, opponent's being stubborn. I'll comply and get rid of a Conqueror's Death at this point. Still have Loran to deal with artifacts and enchantments. Search for Glory gives us a way to find our Gisela. Yeah, I want to wait until I have at least a two mana artifact I can deploy right away to get ahead of mana. Now Angel of Ruins can go. Yeah, this is very silly. But we get to sculpt a perfect hand, which is more likely to beat whatever our opponent's trying to do. And eventually I'll find some 2-mana play. And then Born Power Stone gets us to a lot of mana right away. Alright, found Swords to Plowshares. So I can answer the Companion, and that might prompt him to Finally play a land out, unless they have a mana tithe here. Alright, so now they don't have any pressure. Don't have to discard to hand size this turn. I'm still happy to wait until I find a two mana artifact. Investigator can go. Keeping search for glory to find Gisela. Esper Sentinel. Alright, well, that's a pretty annoying one to have him play. So it might be time to break my own lock now. Could have played Mutavolts. So they couldn't attack with the Sentinel. Opponent finally deploys another creature. Batterbone. And I guess Loron can blow up Sentinel. So we don't need to deal with it. I mean, our hand is pretty stacked at this point. Linvala could also maybe interfere with some of their equipment synergies. Although well, it's only creatures, so the equipment itself can still be equipped. Fireblade Charger gets haste when equipped with a Shadow Spear. Fine to trade. Now I could stop playing a land to once again get the land tax benefit and just play a uh, Worn Power Stone for now. And we'll see if they play a fourth land or if they're gonna keep being stubborn. Sort of body and mind, alright. Well, we have five mana. So we can do a lot with that. 
So what's my answer to a sword? If they equip it's still only a 3-3, they can make it a 4-4 eventually. So Limvala is not necessarily enough. Or I can just play a land, have access to 6 mana. Which gets me the One Ring plus Treasure Map. I guess One Ring does cost 1 mana to activate nowadays. So maybe it is just One Ring and then can activate in the opponent's turn. Bone Splitter, more equipment. We are at 12, so we do have to be a little bit careful with the One Ring. Don't have to draw with it. Search for Glory gains more life, and we have a Lyra in the Graveyard as another life linker. Power Suit can be pretty scary. And this is not going to deal any damage. Yeah, let's start drawing. Our emissary naming creature could also be pretty effective. Could just search for Glory Gisela right now. And then play Treasure Map. And pass with one ring and treasure map available. Boone's gonna finally play their fourth land now. Well, they successfully played around land tax. So they got us beat there. But it did give us all the time in the world to find the perfect hand. Six six. So we'll let the mill us first and then maybe scry with a treasure map. The Lancers could get another legend. Although at this point we have all the legendaries we need, I think. Alright, so step one might be Day of Judgment. Our opponent can play Nahiri. And that'll assist is pretty good too. And there's Nahiri. I'll sank the curse. Scry with a map. Do I draw with a one ring? Basically to find another board wipe. Yeah, I guess so. Book of Exalted Deeds, alright, that can set up the win with Mutavolt now. Although I do need a little bit more white mana to set that up. Let's see, I guess if I flip treasure map, I'll get three more treasures. Is that enough to set up the Book of Exalted Deeds? It might be, actually. Sephara can leave it. Play the book. Animate Beautivolts. Can also tap itself for what it's worth. And then activate book on Beautivolts. And then for as long as we control Beautivolt, our opponent cannot make us lose the game. And uh, sure, we'll play Cold Steel Hearts. So unless they have land destruction, we should be good to go. So this is now a card that says you can't lose a game and your opponents cannot win the game. So I can even take a lethal damage from my own wandering, it doesn't matter. They can mill me out with sword and it doesn't matter. I guess if they mill me out with sword it's gonna be a little harder to win the game since I'll have fewer angels available, but between Emissary and Bruna I'm sure we'll figure it out. We're at minus nine. Yeah, melding Brisella could maybe be a way to stop some 
cheaper spell for messing with my Mutavolt. Yeah, this has been one strange game, but I'm here for it. So what can our opponent find that helps them in their cause of answering a Mutavolt? That's not going to do it. Alright, so time to start putting things on the battlefield, I guess. Um, question is what to name with Saros Emissary, if that's our plan here. Uh, could name Instance, could name Sorcery. It only protects us and creatures we control, so it's not protecting my land from anything. Our opponent gaining life is also going to make it a little harder for us to win. So maybe naming creatures is still the way to go here. Our opponent could have cards like Source to Plowshares, maybe a reason to meld Brisella first before we play Saros Emissary naming creature. But let's try this approach, that way we don't need to worry about the uh, swords triggering their various abilities next turn, assuming our Emissary survives. Which could answer my Saros Emissary. But yeah, now we don't need to worry about creatures damaging us and triggering certain effects. But we'll see if they have answers in hand. A Rune of Sustenance. I mean, our eventual win condition is the opponent just decking. If they have no answers to Mutavolts and yeah, opponent scoops it up, they realize that they may not have any solutions to this. So eventually the most stubborn player won the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Ashling, Flame Dancer, so kind of a Red Storm deck. Okay, I'm gonna keep, we've got some nice mana acceleration. And then hopefully we'll draw into Gisela at some point. For now, I'll play a Cold Steel Heart. And then next turn I can play both Mindstone and Bishop. Or even Mindstone into Overseer. But probably want to gain the extra life first. Opponent with a light up the stage, so... Finding Melt Through to damage and Flare of Duplication. Think we stick to the plan. Our opponent plays Burgi, another powerful storm enabler. Alright, so play Overseer, see what we draw. Don't think I'll be sacking Mindstone. Might need more white mana. Or a Book of Exalted Deeds, for instance. Alright, Sunfall could be a way to reset the board if needed. Don't mind if Overseer dies. That way I can reanimate it with Bruna without it getting exiled by Sunfall. Opponent could just play Ashling, still get a mana from Burgi, so they could keep storming off here. And yeah, Strike It Rich will do exactly that. So now they have two mana. Yeah, I probably have to Sunfall here. Otherwise, I'm afraid our opponent's just gonna kill me next turn. They get to generate a bunch of mana and draw through the deck. And then Flamestoker can also draw more cards. So it would be pretty happy if they spent a spell destroying my creatures. Can double block Burgi. And a Twinferno for double strike or to copy their next spell. And uh I guess Ashling triggered as well, dealing damage. So Burgi survives, but now we're perfectly set up to Sunfall. And then next turn we can maybe cast Bruna, getting back our Angel, or we can uh, play Sarah's Emissary first, and then if that gets removed somehow, we can bring it back. Medallion to discount red spells, another very powerful Storm enabler. Luckily there is not a ton of ritual effects or other storm cards on Arena. There's grape shots and that's about it. 
All right, so hit for four. And then Senra's Emissary, naming... Usually would name Creature to have protection from opposing creatures hitting you, and you can attack past opposing blockers. Against this opponent, we could also name Instant or Sorcery, although it's not entirely clear which one. Could also just play an Angel of Sanctions, exile the Medallion, and postpone that decision. Make it harder for them to redeploy their spells. Opponent with a Fiery Temper, that's three damage, not quite enough. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Reality Chip. So a blue deck, so a Cavern of Souls is going to come in handy. Don't need to show them right away. And then Valkyrie into Restoration helps us ramp. Lancers gets Gisela, and then hopefully we'll be able to meld Brisella here. So don't know how many counter spells a reality chip deck would typically play. Island Ascendant Spirit, it's not a snow-covered island, so a bit of a nombo there. Play our Youthful Valkyrie. And a reality chip can immediately make mana with Mox Amber. We'll name Angel and play Restoration. And we want to tank for one. Sure. Opponent has an unsummon. That's acceptable. Can put Valkyrie in play next turn by discarding it with the Restoration. Not sure yet if we want to immediately Wrath of God. If they're going to reconfigure, then we're less incentivized to Wrath. And that's what they do. Alright, so could still discard a land to help me ramp, or maybe just put in the Valkyrie and then cast Vindicator. And we can maybe just outrace our opponents. Next turn we can play Lancers, even though it's not going to be uncounterable to find Gisela. Even if they were playing snow-covered basics, they still only have the one basic to grow the Ascendant Spirit. Opponent with a Mockingbird can copy some of our creatures as well. Goes for Ascendant Spirit, so now a flying Ascendant Spirit. And we're just going to attack and play Lancers. That resolves. Get Gisela. A Loran to destroy an artifact or enchantment, also a consideration, but we are here to meld our angels. Now Fading Hope, Bouncing, Restoration. So lots of cheap bounce spells it seems. At least they won't be able to cast those with a melded Brisella on the battlefield. But they can maybe bounce one of the individual angels first. Opponent is drawing a lot of cards. But uh, yeah, Cavern of Souls potentially doing a lot of work as well for us. And then we can attack. Play a scroll of Avacyn. And pass the turn. So 
Sir Trust Kanta gets to transform. So our opponent does have access to quite a bit of mana here. And the one ring for protection, so would be killing my opponent next turn. Hoping they don't mess with my Brisella plan. Ominous Seas is acceptable. And our opponent's going to draw. Okay. We can draw as well. And cast an uncountable Bruna. Nothing to get back. But we get to meld Brisella. And let's see if they have an answer to it. Something like a Rivers Rebuke. Would be pretty effective. Now runs Epiphany to take an extra turn. Alright, so... Opponent gets to keep drawing with a One Ring. Get counters on Ominous Seas. Although an 8-8 is actually not gonna attack past our Brisella. Opponent's gonna discard to hand size. But maybe they can set up some loop where they just take infinite turns. I guess they would still need an answer to their own wandering. At least the Epiphany exiles itself. A card like Time Warp can be easier to recur out of the graveyard. Dig through time goes digging. I'm hoping their hand is just all spells that they cannot cast with Brissel's ability. No more unsummons. Subtlety, just a way to bounce spells on the stack. So it does not uh, bounce Brisella here. Ominous is ready to make a Kraken. So currently they would die to an attack from my Flyers. And we can cast... And Miria's Call. But it's not going to be able to counter this, thanks to Brisella. And we may as well just uh, lay down arms to clear a path. And attack. Lancers is indestructible thanks to our Emirius call, but I'm sure opponent's gonna make a Kraken to block it anyway. And Brisella goes the distance. Awesome. All right, so we got to see our Angel control deck in action, and we got to meld Brisella a few times along the way, so mission accomplished. The deck seems pretty fun, and uh, overall the power level's certainly there. You've got some powerful white angels, and then some powerful artifacts and enchantments to support your strategy as well. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.